26 Nosler versus 6.5 PRC. Dave and I are going to talk about two hot rod 6.5 millimeter cartridges here on Ammunition Guides by Ammo.com. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to compare two fairly obscure cartridges, the 26 Nosler and the 6.5 PRC. Now, it's my understanding that the 26 Nosler is four more than the 22 LR? Yeah, that, that kind of, uh, but not really. It's a bit more than that. Uh, but guys, yeah, we're talking about some hot rod rounds today. And I mean, if you need to shoot long range, these are some that you should definitely consider. But if you do like shooting like I do, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon from ammo.com for your next ammo purchase. But yeah, these ones are, yeah, $26 is a bit bigger than 22 LR. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. Uh, one of the thick rounds out there, to say the least, uh, it's got like a 94 grain case capacity on the 26 Nosler yeah. versus, you know, some a little bit less for the 6.5 PRC, right about 62 grains. So yeah, we're shooting a little bit hotter than 22 LR today. Yeah, the 26 Nosler's case looks like a soda can. It really is. It's a big honking round, and it's basically uh, Nosler decided they wanted to make their own cartridge line, right? And uh, they started with the 28 Nosler, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, the 26 came afterwards. They used a 300 Remington Ultra Magnum case as the, uh, the parent for this, and they necked it down, basically, to take a 6.5 millimeter bullet. Uh, whereas, you know, the 6.5 PRC is still a big, big round to say the least, but, uh, yeah, they used a 300 Ruger compact Magnum to make that one. These yeah. are both really rounds that you can use to reach out and touch something as you would put it. Oh yeah, definitely. These can shoot long range. It's what they were designed to do. This can definitely reach well out to a thousand yards if you needed to. Amazing. I'm looking at these rounds side by side. I mean, same Sammy specified max pressure. Mm -hmm. The 26 Nosler has 50% more powder. These 26 Nosler rounds are hot, and that is probably the, one of the biggest downsides of the 26 Nosler is barrel life. You're going to get about 1,000 rounds out of your barrel for peak accuracy. Now, for what? how would that translate to hunting accuracy? Well, not too much, honestly. If you're using a 26 Nosler for hunting, first off, it's going to take you a while to get through 1,000 rounds, and even when you get there you're probably not going to notice a whole lot of difference on the elk or the deer you're pointing at. So you're just talking like minute little deviations in accuracy that you probably wouldn't care about in under a thousand yards. I think, you know, when you're shooting long range competitions, right, you're going to notice small changes in accuracy, uh, how the, the lands are basically retreating uh, from the chamber. And that's really what happens. You have these large powder charges put in these very small spaces like we're talking about with the 26 Nosler and, you know, 90 plus grains of powder. It's a lot. Uh, and it will literally burn down the lands of the rifling, which is what causes accuracy to suffer. Now at hunting distances of like 500 yards or less, I'm pretty sure you're not going to notice the difference between, you know, half an MOA or one MOA. We got to talk about just how much farther can the 26 Nosler reach. The 6.5 PRC is going to lose its supersonic speed right around the 1600 yard mark. That's okay. pretty impressive to say the least. It truly is, yeah. 26 Nosler can keep its supersonic past 2000 yards, which is over a mile. Wow, that's bananas. Yeah. It is nuts. It is absolutely nuts what they're doing with this. It can maintain that speed for quite some time. Uh, your typical 22, or excuse me, 26 Nosler, leaving the barrel around 3,300 feet per second. What is the bullet weight for the 26 Nosler? Oh, about 142 grains. So about two and a half, three times as heavy as your typical 5.56 five, round. So there's the difference. Just yeah. like the same muzzle velocity as your AR-15, two and a half times more bullet. Your ballistic coefficient on these rounds is ridiculous. Even though they're both 6.5 millimeter rounds, which is known for being, you know, very aerodynamic, very, very sleek, high ballistic coefficients. 
The 26 Nosler takes it to the extreme. Uh, your typical 142 grain Acubon from Nosler has a ballistic coefficient of 0.719, which is just insane. And, you know, I don't want to be, you know, unfair to the 6.5 PRC. It has an amazing ballistic coefficient as well, right around 0.625 for your typical 143 grain Hornady ELDX, which is a great bullet. Uh, pretty similar to a 6.5 Creedmoor overall as far as ballistic coefficient is concerned. Uh, but yeah, these two rounds are made for long range shooting. They excel at it and they really buck the wind very well. You were telling me, I think that one of the biggest difference in these is, is uh, action length. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a huge difference between the two. Uh, the 6.5 PRC was actually built to fit in a short action. So similar to the 6.5 Creedmoor or even the 308 Winchester, while your 26 Nas are a little bit bigger, uh, sitting in what we'd refer to as a long action or a 30-06 action. And that's just, uh, you know, it's only about a third of an inch longer, the 26 Nosler, but it's all that power. You just need more rifle to absorb so much pressure, I would imagine. Yeah, and these rounds are not for the faint of heart. If you're recoil sensitive, these are not two rounds that I would start learning on. We're looking at about 30 foot pounds uh, for the 26, while we're looking at about 22 foot pounds for the 6.5 BRC. Which we got to point out. I mean, this is really a credit to the Nosler and Hornady. That's yeah. that's not a gargantuan amount of recoil considering this kind of ballistic performance. It isn't. And I think that's really one of the benefits of a 6.5 millimeter bullet. If you're looking for long range hunting and you want to really reach out there past, I mean, even say 800 yards, you're going to have to go with the 26 Nosler. It's got the power. It's got the, you know, it can serves its kinetic energy just a little bit better than the 6.5 PRC. But that being said, if you're planning on taking down an elk uh, within 500 yards, the 6.5 PRC has the power to do it. Chris, I think that 26 Nosler's greatest shortcoming is uh, availability. Yeah. Uh, whereas 6.5 PRC ain't exactly growing on trees, you can still find it, but... 26 Nosler, man. I uh, Get out your map and sextant if you want to get a case. Yeah, if you want 26 Nosler ammunition, there's only one company that makes it, and that's the name of the cartridge itself, that you're buying Nosler ammo, and that's really all there is to it. Whereas the 6.5 PRC, uh, Hornady did a fantastic job of marketing this cartridge to other companies to get them to produce it. Uh, Winchester, Federal, Browning, Norma, and of course Hornady themselves all make ammunition for it. So... You know, you're going to have better luck finding a 6.5 PRC than you would a 26 Nas. And good luck finding a rifle for it as well. There are only a few uh, companies that offer a 26 Nosler. Uh, Christensen is one. Nosler makes their own rifle. And uh, Browning, the Browning X-Bolt, uh, is pretty much it as of the, the date of recording. Man. Well, maybe it'll catch on in popularity among the squirrel hunters. Uh, Chris, can can you make your own twenty six nozzler easy enough? Are there any any weirdnesses about it that would preclude it from the reloading press? I mean, you can absolutely reload your brass. Uh, if you are able to find some of that twenty six nozzle brass, make sure you keep it because you're going to want it. Uh, when you're looking to go to the reloading press, like you said, uh, finding bullets for either of these cartridges shouldn't be a problem. 6.5 millimeter is becoming incredibly popular, like I mentioned earlier with the 6.5 Creedmoor, but also with the 260 Nosler and the 6.5 Swede. Always, uh, you know, a pretty good supply of 6.5 millimeter bullets available. But if you're looking to buy factory new brass, you'll have a lot easier time finding 6.5 PRC brass as opposed to 26 Nosler. So... Gosh, it's hard to recommend the 26 nozzle or over to 6.5 PIC simply because uh, the latter is so much more freely available. But but that extra powder, that extra power, is that is that worth going out of your way for in your opinion, Chris? It really depends on what you're planning on using the rifle for. If you're an F-class shooter, if you are a long-range shooter who's taken shots, you know, 1,500 yards or more, then yeah, it may very well be worth it. And at that point, you understand exactly what the limitations are as far as the ammunition is concerned and what you're going to have to do. And for a 6.5 PRC shooter, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, an F-class sniper or anything like that. If you just like to long distance hunt, maybe you're out in, you know, the Great Plains or, you know, areas... Uh, maybe in like Colorado or something like that, where you might be able to take a shot on an elk upwards of 400, 500 yards, 
the 6.5 PRC is going to do the job. So it really just depends on what you need the cartridge to do. It's not to say that 26 nozzle can't be used for hunting. It is an excellent hunting cartridge to say the least, but you really have to understand the limitations of what you have in front of you with your rifle. If you want a 26 nozzle, go out there and get it and have an absolute blast shooting it and reloading for it. Uh, but if you want something a little lighter, a little something that has a little bit less recoil, uh, that's easier to find ammo for, the 6.5 PRC is a great choice. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. I'll go buy both today. Absolutely. I'm going. And if you do, make sure you get all of your ammo at ammo.com. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below to help support the channel. And we'll see you out on the range.